Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today we continue our Fat Channel XT video series and take a look at TubeComp, which is one of the compression models that you can select inside of Fat Channel XT, which is the channel strip that you have available inside of Studio One and our Studio Live mixer consoles. Now, if you're not too familiar with compressors, this is arguably one of the easiest compressors to use because it just has two or three knobs that you use to dial in your compression. So if you've always struggled with the concept of compressors, that's the perfect introduction. So let's take a look together. We're here in Studio One and I have a vocal example selected. And before I'm going to go ahead and drag the Fat Channel XT from the Effects Browser onto our channel to apply some compression, I want you to get a bit more of an understanding when you should use compression. Because what I don't want you to do is just slam compressors on everything without reflecting once why you're actually doing it. It should not become something you're just doing. You should understand what you're doing to begin with. And that is a point where I find a lot of people are tuning out already because compressors seem just too difficult at first. But at a very basic level, what you want to do, for example, here on this vocal, is you want to make the difference between the quieter parts of the signal and the louder parts of the signal smaller. So essentially, if I would just right click here and engage a gain envelope, what we're trying to achieve is attenuate these loud parts like so. Okay, and once we're done, we just want to bring up the volume of everything. So that our waveform would then look more like this instead of this. Okay, so we're trying to make the differences between the loud and the quiet parts of a signal smaller. The way we do this is with a compressor. We don't have to do this with automation and we don't have to do this by hand. And one of the easiest compressors to achieve that would be the tube comp that you find inside of Fat Channel XT. Now I'm actually going to go ahead, select a Fat Channel here from my Studio on Effects Browser and drag that directly onto my channel. And to give you an overview, the Fat Channel XT is a complete channel strip equipped with all the tools that you need in your everyday mixing. So it starts with a high pass filter, which is actually selecting the equalizer high pass filter. Then we have a gate for noise suppression and things like that. Then we go into the compressor module, or you can also go into the equalizer module first. You can switch the order around here. And then we have the limiter section at the end and several compression and equalizer types to choose from for the individual compressor and equalizer modules. By default, the Fat Channel XT comes with the standard tube and FET compressor and with the vintage passive and standard equalizer. We're covering these, Joe and I, in separate tutorials one by one. And there's many other types to choose from. You get these if you purchase the Fat Channel XT extension or if you're a Persona Sphere member, then you already have access to all of these add-ons. So maybe consider giving Persona Sphere a try. Today, we want to cover the tube comp right here. And the tube comp, don't let the name fool you, is not a very tube compressor or anything like that. It's actually an opto compressor, emulating one of the most famous models from the 50s and 60s. And it's quite fascinating how these work. So optical compressors are literally light-based compressors. This means that there's a light source, think an LED or something like that, that shines brighter the more audio level is coming in. So the audio level is literally driving that optical element at the input stage. And this light source then shines onto a photosensitive resistor that controls the gain reduction. In simple terms, you could say, the more level comes in, the brighter the light shines, and the more gain reduction occurs. This is a really wild concept, but it makes for a surprisingly natural sounding compression, although it's not nearly as precise as you could be with, say, a digital compressor. There's also tubes at the amplifier stage. I assume that's why the tube comp is called tube comp, even though it's not a tube compressor. And that really makes for a characteristic sound. And together with that optical compression style, this is one of the easiest compressors to dial in because most of the gain reduction is already handled by the circuitry. The way the audio comes in is already determining much of what's going on. And then you literally just set your peak reduction to the level that you want. Then you 
compensate with the gain to make up for the lost level, and that's it. You have a key filter to take out a couple of frequencies that you find annoying and that you don't want the compressor to react to, and that's the entire controls on this unit. Let me show you how to use it. I guess everybody has their own strategy dialing this in, but I like to just set the peak reduction first. So I just uh, set limit or comp here. Comp is more gradual reduction and limit is a very hard reduction of the transients. I'm going to go with comp for now because the limit might sound quite artificial pretty quickly, especially because we're listening to this vocal on its own. And then I want to set the peak reduction until I see the needle indicating the amount of gain reduction here in the center react to the transients. So I don't want to see that needle move all too much before I hit this point. And I also want to see the needle stop after I pass this transient. And only once I reach the next big transient, which would be around here and here, I want to see the needle move in bigger numbers again. So that's kind of how I ensure, if we just look at that visually, that I'm reducing only the transients in gain, kind of like so, so that in the second step, I can raise the average loudness of everything, making the vocal just a lot more powerful and the listener doesn't have to put the volume up and down just to understand everything that's being said, even when they're listening in a more noisy environment. Quite significant, especially in a podcast setting. Okay, so. We dial in peak reduction until we see the gain reduction needle move to the transients. And we probably want to stop with that once we hit seven decibels of my, gain reduction or so. You are my morning. You are my morning star. You are That's my already pretty good. Star. You are my and now we can also increase the gain a bit, ignition. which will increase you overall reduction. Gasoline. You are the very best in me. But also compensate for the lost level. Okay, let's just bounce that. We can do so by right clicking this event and then mix down selection. Now this will generate a stereo file, but we can simply revert that by clicking here to make the created stereo track a mono track and then hit Command and B on a Mac or Control and B on Windows to bounce it back into a mono file. Well, let me just give that a different color and also engage snap to events. Yeah, that's active now. So that I can overlay these two waveforms for a direct comparison. Can you see, I hope you can see that, the transients have been shaven off quite significantly. Yeah, there's a much smaller difference now between the loud and the quiet parts than before. And this is exactly the point. When we're creating a podcast, we don't want people having to turn up their volume in the car all the time up and down just to follow what's being said. That's stupid. And so we're looking for a setting that gives us a fairly consistent loudness the entire time. And that's exactly what the tube comp or the optocomp, as you should probably call it, provides.